Hello everybody, welcome to Physics with Mr. Bywater. Today we're going to be looking at projectile motion. I'm totally kidding, I'm not going to do that the whole time. Uh, but yes, we are going to be looking at a projectile question. This one is fairly straightforward. The first two parts should be a little bit easier, and then the third part may be a little bit more difficult. But we're going to go ahead and try to work through them right now. We are going to be using for acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So this is the acceleration due to the strength of gravity uh, at the surface of the Earth. All right. So other than that, let's go ahead, read the question and see what we can do. Bowie uses a slingshot to fire a rock horizontally off the edge of a 20 meter high cliff. All right. So uh, I like drawing pictures. Actually, I don't really, but in physics I do. So I'm drawing my picture. Here is Bowie. He's throwing a rock horizontally off the cliff and I know that he's throwing it in that direction right there and it is 20 meters tall. Perfect. So now I got an idea of what's happening. The question is how long will it take to hit the ground? And my first thought is what? Really? That's all you're going to give me and you want to tell me how you want me to tell you how long it hits the ground? Well, let's let's look at this. Okay, how long will it hit the ground? The horizontal motion does not matter. Remember, we've talked about that. We have the idea that the horizontal and the vertical are independent of each other. So we're going to look just at the vertical information here. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at Y. So uh, usually we have position, we have velocity in the Y direction, initial and final. We've got acceleration and we've got time right so these are the different variables that often pop up i did already put over here on the right side our uh, three kinematics equations that we use quite often okay so um what are we given well we know if i identify this as being 20 meters off the ground okay then i know that initially my height is 20 meters and notice that i did put y instead of x the reason you know in the equation is x but i am looking vertically right now and so and in, in fact i should probably put a, a y on my a there as well to so that we recognize that this is all vertical information okay i want the time to hit the ground which means that my final position is going to be at zero meters Recognize that I'm not paying attention to any of the horizontal stuff, just vertically. It's starting here at 20 meters, and then it's going to do something like this. And right before it hits the ground, we're going to say that that is zero meters above the ground. This horizontal distance is not important right now. We're only looking at the vertical piece. Okay? The initial y velocity. Okay? Well, if he throws it horizontally, which it says he does... If he throws it horizontally, then there is no up and down motion at the beginning. So therefore, my initial y velocity is zero meters per second, right? We're reading a lot of information out of this. Now, we don't know how fast it's going right before it hits the ground, but we do know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.8 9 meters per second squared. And of course, we don't know, we don't have the time, but that is what we're looking for. So in reality, it didn't say a lot in that question, but we were able to pull out almost every single piece of information except for the final velocity and the time. Now, the final velocity is not important. We do just want the time. So I'm going to choose the equation that doesn't have final velocity. I see it here and I see it here. So I don't want that one. If I can use the other one, then more power to me. Let's go ahead and use that one. So we're going to put in our final position, which is 0, equals the initial position, which was 20, plus the initial velocity, which was 0, times time, plus 1 half, times negative 9.8, times our time squared. Now notice that my initial position was positive because it was up, it was above the ground, and my acceleration is negative because the acceleration is downwards the whole time. Now when I put all this together, I should be able to solve it pretty quickly um, because I've got a zero on the left hand side, this becomes zero. I'm going to subtract the 20 over the other side, and then I'm going to have half of negative 9.8, which is negative 4.8. 
4.9 t squared. And so then I just take the 20 and I divide it by 4.9. Negative divided by negative is positive, And I get 4.08 as being times squared. Right, so I just divided both sides by the 4.9. And so now I'm ready to square root my answer there. And I get 2.02. And so that's going to be my time. Now, notice that in my question, technically this is only two sig figs. We're going to say that we knew it was exactly two just to simplify. So I've got two sig figs there. My acceleration, I used two significant figures there. So our final answer really is only going to be two significant figures anyway. So my final answer is going to be 2.0 seconds is time. And so I actually know right now how long it took to hit the ground. It took two seconds. All right. Now, in follow-up questions, I am going to use the full uh, number. On my calculator, I have 2.0203. I'm going to go ahead and use all of that when I make my next calculations. All right. So that was part A. Part A is done. Not too bad. Just looking at the vertical pieces. Okay. Now, in part B, it now says, given that he launched it with a speed of 23 meters a second, how far will it travel? All right. Well, let's see if we can write down our information. So we've got our initial position, our final position, our velocity, initial velocity in the x direction, our final velocity in the x direction, our acceleration in the x direction, and of course, time. So obviously it did just give me that the initial speed is 23 meters per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in, just like this, all right. Now, what else do we know? Well, we, we can identify horizontally this by the cliff as being zero position. So I can identify my initial position as being zero meters. The final position, we don't know. That's actually what we're looking for, right? Uh, our final velocity, we know our final velocity in the x direction. We know the horizontal component of the velocity. We know that the horizontal component is 23 meters per second. If you remember from the examples that you've seen either in class or in demos or in uh, the applet, that the horizontal is not changing here. There's nothing causing the horizontal motion to change and it's independent from the vertical velocity. The acceleration likewise is going to be zero meters per second squared. This is the horizontal acceleration. There is nothing causing any change in the horizontal direction. The only acceleration is vertical. Now time we know because the question is right before, how far is it going to travel? So that's when it hits the ground. And we know how long it takes to hit the ground. It was 2.0 seconds. And so this time is actually the link between x and y. So we can use that 2.0. And remember, I am going to use all the digits on my calculator. And so I've got actually every single piece of information that I need except for the position. All right. Again, they didn't tell us very much. But we can glean information out of the scenario, out of the situation, and I was able to fill in just about everything. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and we can really use any of these, but I'm going to use the first equation again. Okay, the, the reason being is because I've already basically solved for x there. The other problem is the second one doesn't have any x in it, so that's not really going to help me. And the last one, notice that the x is being multiplied by the acceleration, which is zero. <laughs> so it would go away, right? So we're going to go ahead and put it in the first one. So our final position is equal to the initial position, which was zero, plus the initial velocity, which was 23, times the time, which is that 2.0 that we had before, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is zero, times the time again, that 2.0 squared. Not that it matters because this is zero. That is going to be zero because I'm multiplying by zero. So all I really need to do is take that time and multiply it by 23. And what I get is 46. Again, I do get 46.467. But if I'm sticking to my significant figures, two significant figures, my answer is going to be x is 46 meters. All right? So we're actually cruising along pretty well. We've got a and b. That wasn't too bad, right? Now we're going to look at c. 
What will the rock's velocity right before striking the ground? What will be the rock's velocity? Okay, so what we want to know is, and I'm going to draw this over. I'm going to let's minimize this a little bit. All right, perfect. So the ball, the rock is coming down and it's going to strike the ground, right? And we want to know what is its velocity right before it hits. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need two things, right? We need to know what is its horizontal velocity and we need to know what is its vertical velocity. If we know the components, the vertical and horizontal components, I can find the actual velocity that it's striking the ground. Now the horizontal I already know. The horizontal is 23 meters per second. That was the launch speed and because nothing is causing it to slow down in the horizontal direction because there's no air friction here. We're sorry, I should have made the, it clear we were assuming no air friction. Uh, then we've got 23 meters per second horizontally. Now I do need to know the vertical velocity. You know, we found the time up here in the first question, but we didn't find the vertical velocity. So we are going to do that now. Of course, we have everything that we need. All right, we're going to use the second equation here to do that. And we'll go ahead and let's see. So we're going to go V, the final velocity, vertically is equal to the initial vertical velocity, which we, we knew was zero, plus, again, notice that I'm only paying attention to the vertical stuff here. The acceleration, which was negative 9.8, times the time, which was that 2.02, whatever it was, okay? And so now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply those two, and I should get a negative number because it is going down. And I get that my final velocity is negative. Uh, I get 19.8, but I'm gonna write down 20 because I'm doing two sig figs and 19.8 will round up to 20. All right, and notice that it is negative. It's negative because the math tells me it is. It's also negative because I know the vertical velocity at this point is down, okay? So there we've got the two components. Now we should be able to solve for the final velocity, which is this right here. I can use Pythagorean theorem, and the Pythagorean theorem should allow me to solve for the uh, the magnitude there, so I go 20 squared plus 23 squared equals the overall final velocity squared. And when I work that out, now I'm not using actually 20 here, I'm going to use the 19 point whatever that it was, and I end up getting a final velocity magnitude here of 30.3 which I'm just going to write, because it was 30.3, it's just going to be 30 meters per second. And of course, I'm not done because velocity is a vector, and therefore it also needs a direction. So we're going to find a direction as well. Now, I'm going to make a small adjustment. If I go up to my drawing here, I'm going to, this is my zero degrees, right? So I really would like to have this angle right here. How far down has it rotated, rotated from zero degrees? So I'm going to redraw it with the 23 and the, the 20 over there again using that 19.8 uh, there even though my, my answer is 20 because it's two sig figs. And so I should be able to use tangent of theta is equal to that opposite number, that 20 or 19.8 over 23. Right, and so remember to use inverse tangent, please. Do not dare use tangent. You gotta solve for theta, you gotta move the tangent away. So we're gonna do tangent of that 19.8 over 23. The 23 was given to me, that's how I know it's exactly 23. And when I solve, I should get, what I end up getting is about 40.7, which will give me, when I write it in two sig figs, 41 degrees. And so my final answer should be 30 meters per second at 41 degrees. And that gives me the final velocity vector as it strikes the ground. 
recognize that throughout this whole problem, we, dealed with, we dealt with the horizontal and we dealt with the vertical. That allowed us to answer the question. All right, so that's it. And I hope that's enough to get you started on two-dimensional kinematics problems. Ooh, what just happened?